Hey, what's up, party people? This is Xenophobe on the Atari Lynx. I had a Lynx way back in the day, and this was one of the games I played a lot for it. And eventually I sold it, and I missed playing Xenophobe a lot. And, you know, sometimes you go back to a game years later, and it's not really as good as, good as you remember. Kind of, you know, I had that experience with a lot of Commodore and Amiga games, like uh, Xenon 2. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I got this one again recently, popped it in, and... It's as charming as ever, and I couldn't put it down, uh, just like the old days. And I want to show you what makes this game so cool. So you start the game, and you're presented with a bunch of characters with goofy names, like Mr. Embrace. <laughs> hey, 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 wait up, man. Hey, look, I, I promise this is a cool game. Just check it out for just one minute. Okay, so what you do in this game is after you're beamed aboard this starship, you have to eradicate all the aliens. And as you may have guessed, it's kind of a parody of movies like Aliens. Uh, it's got the face huggers, that, uh, they're called uh, critters in this. You know, that's a pretty adorable way of putting it. And lots of other creatures, uh, some of them. A psychic stun. Uh, some of them roll through a ball when you shoot them, and you can kind of bounce them off walls and have to be careful not to get bowled over by them. Some some of them lean around doorways and have a psychic attack. And one thing that was neat back in the day um, is that you could do multiplayer where one person could play as one of the aliens, or one of the bigger aliens. And so that was kind of an early asymmetric multiplayer where you had three players hunting aliens and one of them trying to, you know, mess up the player and, you know, as the, as the alien, you couldn't use guns, but you could steal them and it, it was pretty fun. Uh, you know, of course, now try finding a few people with lynxes and uh, good luck with that. The controls are pretty good. Um, they can be a bit clumsy, but I think they're actually improved upon from the arcade version, which I, I think used more buttons. Uh, it had like a duck button, you know, instead of just pressing down duck. Um, so I feel like this one's a lot more manageable, although it's been ages since I played the arcade one with its, I think it has some special controller. Um, and there you see I, uh, killed all the aliens, so I'm off the base. And there's a few different ways to advance in, in this game. Uh, you know, this is only one of them, this, this gives you the biggest bonus, but, um, you can also find machines that you can use to self-destruct the ship. Um, you don't get a bonus for this, and you don't get any bonus health, but uh, it's a good way off the level. Um, you get 10 seconds, and there you go. Or, uh, you know, one other way of doing it is you let the base get overrun, and obviously there's no bonus here. You're, uh, yeah, don't do that. Uh, that often involves dying, too. There's also, um, you know, a lot of other machines you can use. Uh, for, for instance, this is a machine that spits out grenades, and you can actually repair it if you have the wrench, and then uh, load up on grenades. Some machines are, you know, more useful than others. This is a uh, monster encyclopedia on the first level you can access. There's a, a security robot on one of the levels that you can... It starts out attacking you, and then you can reprogram it if you have the disc to go and be like an option for you to attack the aliens. You can pick up a jetpack that helps you not fall through holes, and that way you don't have to wait for the elevator. And you can also use it to jump over the reactor of the ship, which is a uh, handy for not dying. You can blow up doorways with grenades, uh, which of course, you know, then you can't close them and keep the aliens out. Um, and for the love of God, if you get the key to open the sealed Xeno containment area, be sure to come equipped. Yeah, don't do what I just did there. There's a, a good variety of weapons in the game. Um, there's everything from your pea shooter to this um, kind of uh, zapper gun that reaches all the way across the, the screen, which is really good for hitting this guy, because if you're over halfway across the screen with them, he'll uh, do that, and you don't want that. 
Um, and that painting droid over there, he gives you more weapons. If, so if you're down and out, you've got only your pistol or your uh, fists, which are damn near useless, he might come and deposit a new weapon. Uh, oh yeah, and then the best gun in the game is the poofer. Yeah, it's really called the poofer gun. Uh, which lets out a little blast of smoke of some kind, and it's very short range, but you can pretty much kill these aliens uh, really fast with it. And this is what you can do too. You can roll the roly polies against the door, lob a grenade, and blow them up. Otherwise, you kind of have to wait for them to unroll. So, kind of speed stuff up a little bit to do that. Some of the levels are even on fire, and this is this is not the poofer gun, but this is a fire extinguisher. And on this one, you have to switch between this and your other weapon by picking them up or dropping them um, to alternately extinguish flames and uh, kill the aliens. Also, it's sometimes faster to uh, jump your way across hazards than to um, walk, uh, kind of like the minish cap where I kind of wound up rolling Link through all the damn levels because it was way quicker. Um, and I really like the art design in this game. Um, some of the backgrounds are really cool looking. Um, the aliens are, you know, kind of, uh, I think they're kind of hilarious. Um, and the, your player characters are stupid in the best way possible. The levels are pretty vast. Uh, this one's four stories, for example. And I know I already said this, but I love the backgrounds in this game. They really have a lot of personality. And one thing I want to get into is that if you're expecting a game like Contra, you're going to be really disappointed. This is more like an adventure. Um, it's kind of RPG-ish. It's really just about uh, lots of uh, wacky stuff happening on space stations and, uh, you know, trying your best to survive. Uh, you know, there's a damage model where... Uh, you know, the critters suck your health and you can get kind of slowly eaten away at. Um, so it's not a game where you're, you know, have all this dexterity and you're jumping over shots and avoiding everything. You know, it's nothing like that. Uh, you just have to kind of come up with a good strategy and uh, don't die too fast. But it's very doable. Um, it's not a cheap game, in, in my opinion. Uh, there's not a lot of what hit me. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty fair stuff. And it's one of those games that when I pick it up, I have trouble putting it back down. Much like that critter. Yeah. I did go back and revisit the Arcade Xenophobe. And as you can see here, it's a uh, three-player split screen, so it's pretty geared towards multiplayer, which is nice. Um, and that was kind of the big deal about it. And yeah, I feel like, um, you know, the, the controls are kind of kludgy. Um, I kind of like the Lynx one better. And actually, when I, um, you know, my experience with, with Xenophobe, um, the last 10 years before I bought it again for Lynx was the arcade version on like some kind of best of pack for the GameCube. And, uh, I was really let down. So I thought, you know, yeah, probably, it probably just hasn't aged well. But, uh, the good news is that, uh, you know, the Lynx one is, I think, an improvement on this. So, if you're looking for a game that's kind of a unique experience with a lot of variety and, uh, you know, crazy things constantly happening, you could do a lot worse than pick up Xenophobe. Uh, it's not for everybody, you know, like I said, it's not Contra. But it is a really fun multiplayer space game. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.